Now on KCAL 9 News at 4, the White House takes action against the Ebola outbreak, just as there is a new scare on board a cruise ship. Plus, the mayor of Murrieta is booked on DUI charges after a crash that injured four teenagers. And a local student dies from meningitis, the rush to find others who may have been exposed to the disease. Live from the broadcast center in Los Angeles, this is KCAL 9 News at 4. Live, local, late breaking. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Sylvia Lopez. And I'm Peter Dowd. There is a new man in charge of the U.S. government's response to the Ebola crisis as more local emergency centers train for the possibility of the virus hitting close to home. Here's what we know right now. President Obama has appointed Ron Klain, Vice President Joe Biden's former chief of staff, as the new Ebola czar. As an airliner tracks down some 800 passengers, who flew with the second Dallas nurse to be infected. A third health worker from the same hospital is quarantined on a cruise ship. And UCLA Medical Center staff conducts a drill to prepare for any Ebola cases that may surface here. Let's begin our live coverage on today's developments with KCAL 9 health reporter Lisa Siegel. Lisa. Hi, you too. Hello, everyone. Healthcare centers here and around the country are doing their best to get ready and ease fears at the same time. Meanwhile, those two infected nurses are doing better. Doctors say Nina Pham, the first person to contract Ebola in the U.S., is resting comfortably at the National Institutes of Health. She's interactive with the staff. Um, she's eating. But her condition went from good down to fair after her flight from Dallas. This virus knocks you out. She thanked her doctors at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital before she left. The second nurse to contract Ebola is getting treatment at Emory University Hospital. Officials are investigating when Amber Vinson first started showing symptoms as outreach continues to those who flew on the same planes and had contact with her in Ohio. And a lab supervisor who handled the specimen from Ebola patient Thomas Eric Duncan is quarantined on a cruise ship. She's shown no signs of infection, but is confined to her cabin until the ship docks in Texas. With growing criticism of the government response, President Obama named a new point person, Ron Klain, who used to work for Vice Presidents Joe Biden and Al Gore. The appointment is already drawing criticism. What we were looking for is not an Ebola expert, uh, but rather an implementation expert. According to one report, about 1,000 people across the U.S. are being watched for Ebola symptoms. They've either been asked to monitor themselves or contact a CDC counselor. Right now, they have not shown symptoms. Back to you. Well, health specialists are trying to clarify the best way to isolate people who may have been exposed to the Ebola virus. According to the CDC, the risk of exposure is low unless a patient shows symptoms such as a high fever. So if someone is quarantined, that doesn't necessarily mean that person has the virus. Quarantine means that I'm really worried about you. You've come in contact with a patient that's sick and I actually need to separate you physically from the rest of the population. Relatives of Thomas Duncan, the first man to die in the U.S. from Ebola, should be out of quarantine this Sunday as long as they show no symptoms. The length of quarantine is about 21 days. Stay with KCAL 9 News for the very latest on the Ebola virus in America and the outbreak in Africa. You can get updates anytime at KCAL9.com. A local college student may have died from meningitis, and now doctors are worried that some local teens may have been exposed to the contagious disease. KCAL 9's Cara Finstrom reports they're asking anyone who came in contact with Sarah Stelzer to come forward. She was a very bright person, always happy, uh, so fun to be around. Students at Moore Park High are remembering 18-year-old Sarah Stelzer. The recent graduate died in San Diego after officials believe she contracted bacterial meningitis. Now in the midst of the grief, important questions about whether anyone at San Diego State University, where Stelzer lived on campus, or here in Moore Park, where she'd recently returned for homecoming celebrations, could have gotten the contagious disease. I just heard people are getting tested. Moore Park's principal says county health officials believe up to 10 students may have been exposed when Stelzer helped friends with makeup at private homes. She says Stelzer was not on campus for the homecoming dance, but she does not know whether she attended the football game. District leaders released a statement saying people who may have been at risk were immediately identified and were seen by a physician to start antibiotics as a precautionary measure. 
In San Diego, school officials are concerned about a much larger group. Now uh, we're in the range of uh, estimates of three to four hundred people that were notified. Stelzer was a sorority member and had recently attended two fraternity parties and her sister's 21st birthday party. She tweeted to her friends about that busy time, saying, This coming weekend might possibly be the best weekend of my life. Now hundreds of students at SDSU are lining up for preventative antibiotics. Health officials stress spreading the disease, which passes through respiratory secretions, requires close contact. But they say it's a concern on campuses because it can be passed by sharing drinking glasses, kissing, or living in close quarters. It's crazy to think that she was only a freshman and she got it and it was just so all of a sudden. SDSU officials confirmed that Stelzer did have the vaccination against meningitis, but that apparently it didn't protect her against the strain she got. Cal State officials do recommend but don't require that all their college students get that vaccination. Reporting here from Moore Park, Cara Finstrom, KCAL 9 News. Hey, breaking news right now, water main break along Pico Boulevard in the Mid-Wilshire District. Stu Mundell joins us live with the latest. Stu. Peter, Sylvia, that water main break actually on the corner of Ridgely and Pico on Ridgely itself. You can see it right there, but the flooding was on Pico near the cross of Hauser. Now you can see that uh, actually LAPD officers are there checking out that huge gaping hole in the ground. DWP made it out here very quickly this afternoon, shut that water off, but there was a severe flooding issue out here for about a half hour as the water poured onto Pico and down on Hauser. Right now the water is off. Some of Ridgely is closed while the repairs are underway. Live in Sky nine over the mid Wilshire area. I'm Stu Mandel. Peter, Sylvia, back to you. Okay, Stu, thank you. Bermuda is taking a beating right now from a powerful hurricane named Gonzalo. The center of the storm is less than 100 miles south southwest of the tiny territory, packing winds around 125 miles an hour. This was the scene a short while ago in Hamilton, Bermuda, as palm trees were whipped around. You can see the wind and the force of it right now. And here's a look at the massive system from space. Now, Bermuda residents know the drill, board up, pack up, head for higher ground. Many of them made last minute trips to the store to stock up. It looks like it's going to hit us right on the nose and it could be as bad, if not worse, than Pavian. That storm hit Bermuda 11 years ago, killing four people. Meteorologists expect Gonzalo to generate surface high as 10 feet in Bermuda. It's a different story here. Some beautiful weather for the start of our weekend. Kai Goldberg is in for Josh and joins us with a check of the conditions. Hey, Kai. Hello, Peter. Thank you very much. Happy Friday, everybody. Sky 9 right now, the mid Wilshire District, West Hollywood, looking into the San Fernando Valley, just over those Hollywood Hills. What a great looking shot that is. Really nice. I want to thank all the guys up in the Sky 9 chopper for that. You saw some of that cloud cover rolling on into the foothill areas. We're going to get to more of that in a second, but back to Gonzalo, a very strong hurricane, a category three hurricane. We've got winds up to 115, 120 miles per hour, but there is good Good news as you look at this satellite and radar shot, we're not seeing it affecting the East Coast whatsoever, not even any cloud cover where they are seeing some surf that will continue to be generated in through the weekend, but they will be safe and spared from Gonzalo. Taking a look at the cloud cover again, we've got a line of clouds starting to roll into Ventura, now Los Angeles County from the northwesterly direction. That's the onshore flow. That's what has kept us cooler. You can see 60s and 70s. How about the weekend? That forecast? Minutes away. Peter, back to you. All right, Kai, thanks. An update on our KCAL 9 weather app. It's now available for Android products and on iTunes for Apple products. Remember, you can download it free to get weather updates anytime. The mayor of Murrieta, who made national headlines during huge immigration protests in his city, is in the spotlight again, this time for an alleged DUI accident. Officers determined Mayor Alan Long had been drinking last night when he rear-ended a car carrying four teenagers. KCAL Online Inland Empire reporter Tom Waite has the latest on the victim's conditions. It's a terrible thing that happened, but I mean, I'm worried about him. That's reaction to this crash that happened last night. Four teens, including these sisters, according to friends Chloe and Camille Rogers, were hurt when the mayor of Murrieta's pickup truck slammed into them. Police say the mayor was driving under the influence. I was with my friends and we drove by and we were like, should we stop, see what's happening? It happened here on Jefferson near Lily in Murrieta. According to police, the mayor of the town was going south, as were the teens in the car in front of them. He rear-ended them, sending all all four to the hospital, some with serious injuries. I heard it and it was like loud. 
So I looked out my bedroom window. Again, I looked out my bedroom window, and all I just seen was cars kind of like, you know, backed up. The um, four girls are all cheerleaders. They were at a pep rally for tonight's football game. Uh, they had left the school, and then the accident happened a short time after that. Police say Mayor Allen Long's blood alcohol level was .07 at the scene. While that's under the legal limit of .08, police say Long showed signs of being under the influence. He was booked in the county jail. I think it's a tragedy for, for him, for his family, for the community. Long is up for re-election. He works full-time as a battalion chief at Anaheim Fire. A spokesperson there says he will remain on the job. As for the teens, they are expected to recover. We reached out to the mayor by phone and went to his home. We have not heard back from him. Him. We also reached out to the city. Our call was also not returned. In Murrieta, I'm Tom Waite, KCAL 9 News. Former LAUSD Superintendent John Daisy participated in a teleconference with others who have been forced out of similar positions across California. Daisy discussed the political climate at the LAUSD and said he's got several options on the table for what he may do next. Youth corrections um, as an area, juvenile justice. Another would be um, working and supporting uh, the development of superintendents. And the third would be a consideration for political office. Daisy did not elaborate on what public office he may seek. The 53-year-old resigned Wednesday after three years as superintendent. The teleconference was sponsored by Students Matter. A Southland mother accused of stabbing her three children to death appeared in a downtown L.A. courtroom today for a pretrial hearing. Cameras were not allowed in court today. 30-year-old Carol Ann Coronado is accused of fatally stabbing her three young daughters and attempting to kill her mother at her home in the West Carson area back in May. Two-and-a-half-year-old Sophie, 16-month-old Yasmin, and two-month-old Xenia were all stabbed to death. Coronado pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Three people are recovering this afternoon following a small plane that crashed yesterday in a rugged area near Big Bear Lake. The plane went down near Highway 18 in the San Bernardino Mountains. The plane was destroyed, but the pilot and two passengers are in fair condition. The aircraft is registered to the same owner involved in a different plane crash near Lone Pine in July of last year. Four people survived that accident. Well, are carbs really the enemy? The type of carbs you need to incorporate into your diet. But first, the career of a 28-year LAPD veteran in the hands of the police chief. Why his comments could lead to him being fired from the force. Plus, it's time to get out that wallet. Later on, KCAL 9 News at 4 will explain why October is one of the best times to buy. And what's in a name? How the war on terrorism is hurting the business of a San Diego clothing boutique.
The career of a 28-year veteran LAPD officer is now in the hands of Police Chief Charlie Beck. A department panel wants him to be fired after he made controversial remarks about a shooting in which he killed another officer. KCAL 9's Jeff Nguyen tells us where the case goes next. Hard, very hard. It was an open board, so a lot of his friends and family members were there. and It was very, it was very sad. He took it very, very hard. The attorney for narcotics officer Frank Liga says his client is asking for leniency after an LAPD Board of Rights recommended on Wednesday that Liga should be terminated. This follows the release of an audio recording in which Liga is heard making disparaging remarks against fellow officers and public figures at a training session in November. In it, he talks about the 1997 gunfight in which he shot and killed fellow officer Kevin Gaines. Both men were in plain clothes, and the LAPD ruled it self-defense. Do you regret shooting him? I says, no, I regret that he's alone in the truck at the time. I could have killed a whole truckload of them and would have been happily doing it, doing so. Frank said, what I meant to say is people trying to kill me. If there was a truckload full of people trying to kill me, I have to defend myself, and that's what I'm going to do. Political blogger Jasmine Kanick released the recordings. Uh, Look, a truckload of who? Black men? Black police officers? Because at the end of the day, Officer Gaines was supposed to be on the same team that Detective Liga was on. Liga's attorney says his client is sorry for what he said and provided us with Liga's written apology, which reads in part, I fully admit and recognize that the things I said were very wrong, and I deeply regret that I used poor judgment when I spoke that day. Chief Charlie Beck has up to 25 days to decide if he'll fire Liga or impose a lighter penalty. Liga's attorney plans to submit a written appeal to the chief on Monday. Reduce the penalty to days and not a termination. This is an opportunity for the chief to show that they take matters and issues like this very seriously. Whatever the chief decides, it cannot be overturned, not even by the police commission. If Liga is fired, he can challenge that in court. In downtown Los Angeles, Jeff Nguyen, KCAL 9 News. 25 years ago today, the powerful Loma Prieta earthquake struck the San Francisco Bay Area. The magnitude 6.9 quake killed more than 60 people and injured 3,000 more. It caused severe damage in San Francisco and Oakland. Buildings collapsed in San Francisco's Marina District. The Bay Bridge was severely damaged and the two-level Cypress structure in Oakland collapsed. Well, some brave souls went over the <laughs> edge to support the Boy Scouts of America in Orange County. The Irvine Marriott sponsored this fundraiser. 80 people are rappelling off the 17-story building. Each paid at least $1,000 for that thrill. By the way, the event also includes other activities for the less adventurous. Those are some brave scouts. Oh my gosh, I will, I will take the less adventurous activities myself. I'm an Eagle Scout and there's no way I would have done yeah, that. Yeah, even you. <laughs> yeah, I think I would be oh, drenched in sweat right? and anxiety. At least the weather would help you with that today. It certainly yeah? would, Sylvia. A little yeah. cooler. A little cool, a little bit of a breeze yeah. trying to keep mm. the sweat down. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're looking good, guys. We've got a nice weekend coming our way. Happy Friday, everybody, as we look live to Santa Monica, our pier camera going from the south to the north. And you know what? It's just gorgeous out at the beach, too. But we are seeing the changes. You can feel them in the air as well. We're looking at an onshore flow that really kicked in today, kept our temperatures well below average from the beaches all the way to the valley areas. And here it is. Let's go through the numbers in the downtown area for you on this Friday. There's your average about 78. And now we came in at about 76 degrees today. And that overnight low, pretty pleasant, slightly above average. We're seeing low 60s, and we'll see more of those low 60s into this Friday night. Temperatures comfortable in the Chino area. Look at that beautiful right now. It's 78, a little cooler downtown, 74, and we'll take you to the Van Nuys Airport, heart of the San Fernando Valley at about 74 degrees. As we get to the weather headlines for you, strong onshore flow continues, not just today, but into Saturday as well as Sunday. As a matter of fact, right on into the beginning of next week as well, we'll see more of that marine layer, the low cloud cover, the fog, and that cloud cover making it into the coastal valleys as we take a look towards Saturday morning and then again Saturday night into Sunday morning. We'll continue with below normal temperatures through the weekend and into the week again because of that stronger onshore flow and it all stems from a couple of low pressure systems. This one not affecting us yet. It will as we head in towards that Tuesday forecast. But in the time, meantime, we're looking at this trough into central and northern California for you this afternoon. Widely scattered showers. That's the front and we've got those showers from Vancouver all the way to San Francisco for you this afternoon. But that's where the cold front stops as we make our way to central California. That front 
dies down, it weakens. It won't provide us with any precipitation, unfortunately, but what we will get from it is that cloud cover. We'll call it partly cloudy into Saturday. I think we'll get a little bit more sunshine on Sunday afternoon. Temperatures will continue to stay mild. We're looking at basically Anna out there, Tropical Storm Anna, right now making its way towards the Hawaiian Islands. As you can see, her winds sustain at 75 miles per hour, a Category 1 hurricane. So finally making its way to Category 1 hurricane status earlier this afternoon. And look at the forecast cone, keeping Anna fortunately away from the Hawaiian Islands, but they'll still see a little bit of storm surge. They will also look at some waves out there, probably seeing it some waves up to six and 10 feet along those south and southwest facing beaches, partly cloudy tonight. And we're looking at temperatures pleasant along the coast tomorrow in the low 70s. We'll see some mid and slightly upper 70s for some of the inland valley areas tomorrow. We'll see mid 70s into the weekend. Once again, partly cloudy Saturday. Again, I think we'll see more sunshine Sunday afternoon, staying into the mid 70s on Monday and Tuesday, and then we'll start to warm things up by the middle of next week. We'll see the valley areas as well as downtown back into the 80s once again. Once as again, we'll hit on the fact that we'll continue to see some late night, early morning fog along the coast 74, 73 Sunday back into the mid 70s by Tuesday. And then take a look, Peter and Sylvia. We've got some beach weather coming our way next week. We'll see those beaches back into the 80s. Have a great weekend. Back to you. Ah, Ooh, looking figure. forward to that, Kai. <laughs> Thanks. Even President Obama is not a immune to credit card problems, the reason why his card was recently declined at a restaurant. But for a saying goodbye, friends and family gather for an emotional farewell for two local teenagers killed in a devastating crash. And students standing up and together after possible hate crimes at two LA County schools. Is there something in your community that David Goldstein should investigate? Call the KCAL 9 Investigates tip line at 818-655-2442 or email your tip to KCBS TV Investigations at CBS.com. Racial tensions are heightened at two local schools following possible hate crimes on both campuses. Today, students at Bellflower and Mayfair High Schools in Lakewood rallied to support each other as police try to track down the person behind the attacks. KCAL 9's Louisa Hodge talked to the students. 
Students at Mayfair High School say they won't be bullied. Raising signs and their voices in protest. There was a rope in our school just hanging there, lynching rope. This is the image that sparked outrage. A noose hanging from a tree in front of their school several days ago. Yesterday, another one was discovered at Bellflower High School, as well as racist graffiti plastered on the side of the theater building. Bellflower didn't do this, we didn't do this to them. We're supporting each other. Other schools are supporting us by wearing our colors. I think it's just important that people should know that there shouldn't be hate or anything between people and that everyone's equal in their own way. And that message resonated across Mayfair High School campus. I want to go home. But I knew I couldn't because it made me seem weak. So I, I think us doing this is making us seem like we're stronger. My son actually, when he first saw it, thought it was a scene from Conjuring. And I had to educate him and let him know historically what that symbol meant in the African-American community. Andrea Bariel's son, in turn, helped organize this peaceful march against these racist acts. Their strength and unity, Bariel says, seemed fitting on a campus known as home of the monsoons. As you know, a storm is very powerful, and the number of kids that came together just represented a storm in the power and the enormity and the amount of students that came together to support the cause. Investigators say, unfortunately, there were no security cameras on the schools to capture whoever did this. They say at this point there are no suspects and no arrests. In Lakewood, Louisa Hodge, KCAL 9 News. California's unemployment rate fell to 7.3% in September. The unemployment rate was 7.4 in August. The state's jobless rate has been declining steadily since 2010. Last month's drop comes even as the number of jobs in the state dipped by almost 10,000. The markets ended today on an up note after a turbulent week. The Dow today closed up 263 to 16,380. The Nasdaq and S&P were also up, but overall the markets were down for the week. A woman is sent to jail for a messy yard. Why one judge thinks the punishment fits the crime. Plus, training to make split-second decisions that could save lives. We get a first-hand look at the L.A. County Sheriff's Department's high-tech training. And bad for business, how the war on terrorism is creating a headache for a San Diego clothing boutique. 